Hey everybody, it's Rhino and welcome to my apartment. Please do not judge the mess. Today I thought that we could do something a little bit fun. For those of you who may or may not know, the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser is about to have its maiden voyage as of recording this. It's about a little under a week away and um, some folks have already experienced it. So on social media and uh, YouTube and everywhere, we're about to see a flood of content related to that. And I'm sure here we'll have some food related stuff on YouTube.com com slash WW info. I'm sure you're going to get a peek inside and on uh, youtube.com slash does unplug. We'll kind of talk about the experiences as well. So lots of Star Wars content coming your way. I am so excited uh, and I feel very fortunate to be able to have that opportunity uh, be afforded to me. So if you know me, anytime I get excited about anything, I like to kind of have a fun themed activity. I like to have themed clothes, which I'm going to dress up for this experience and food and all that sort of stuff. So I thought uh, there's probably other people out there that love Star Wars. I mean, I don't think it's a niche fandom. And I thought that we could do um, a fun uh, themed cocktail today. Uh, so, because as you can see behind me here, I, I have amassed this collection because I love themed cocktails, but then I have a million bottles that I can do nothing with. Before we get started, I want to remind everybody that the sponsor of the Disney Dining Channel is Dreams Unlimited Travel, who are experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. When you book with them, it costs you nothing extra on your trip and you help support the channel and the content that we produce here. So if you are looking to uh, take a flight on the Star Cruiser, or a cruise on the Star Cruiser? I don't know. If you want to go with the, to the Star Wars Hotel, you can contact them, dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. And uh, like I said, it costs you nothing extra and you help support us. So today we are going to be making a drink, excuse me, while I duck out of frame because I put it down below me here. We're going to be using the uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, the official Black Spire Outpost cookbook. This one is like kind of fun because it talks about all the different like backstories between the food and like it gives it some like more context in relation to the land, but it has has like sides, starters, snacks, soups, stews, breads, desserts, main courses, and of course, in the very back, drinks. And they're not all alcoholic either. So this drink that we're actually gonna make today is non-alcoholic, but for the sake of this video, I'm making an alcoholic version for myself. However, just omit the alcohol uh, if you're interested. What's, what's kind of cool too is that this is in here, but it's not at Galaxy's Edge. So I don't know if this just didn't make the cut or if it's like a bonus drink, but in this cookbook, you'll find like um, the, the dig of a slug slinger, which is not my favorite drink just because it has rosemary in it. And I learned that I do not like rosemary, but um, like the cliff, uh, cliff dweller is in here. I struggle with cookbooks like some of this stuff because sometimes there's like too many ingredients. And I am somebody who, again, unless you're making like turning out a lot of these, like it's for a party or something like that. Sometimes the investment into the ingredient feels like a burden. It's like, it ends up making the drink way more expensive than you want it to be, right? So what I like to do is make a drink inspired by the recipe. So it's like close enough, right? So that's kind of what we're going to be doing today. And we're going to be making the Blurg fire. Okay. So the Blurg fire, I'm going to read you the little burb here. It says, ain't no other fruit in the galaxy quite like a citrum. Not only is its juice somehow sour and sweet simultaneously, but the taste is chased by a powerful burst of heat that'll leave your throat just begging to be cooled down, preferably by more delicious citrum juice. Citrum are only good fresh and they don't stay fresh long, so if you ain't got much squeezing time in your schedule, there's another option. One of the bartenders at Oga's Cantina in Batu's Black Spire Outpost came up with this secret mix of juices and spices that perfectly mimics the citron's refreshing burn. Had to try it to believe it, but even my refined palate couldn't tell the difference. So these are the ingredients. It says the, the like prep times five minutes and it yields. So this is just one serving. It says easy. So it's, it's, you're going to need lime, red salt, two ounces of pomegranate juice, a quarter ounce of habanero lime syrup. I don't know where you find that and who has that lying around, but four ounces prepared lemonade. So I was reading this and I was just trying to look around and be like, well, what do I have that like I could make with this? And so I was like, well, I don't have pomegranate juice, but I do have cranberry juice. And again, the habanero lime syrup, I was thinking to myself where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know where you're going to find habanero syrup. I mean, I'm sure there's places where you can make it yourself by boiling down, um, you know, creating a syrup, which I, I believe, I mean, please correct me in the comments and everything like that. But I believe like 
when you make simple syrup at home, which simple syrup is literally just like water and sugar, it's I think like a one in one and you just like reduce it. Um, but I'm lazy and I like to buy these for like a dollar or like $2 and it's time saving. So this is just a syrup, like a simple syrup, but there is a winery um, in Plymouth, Massachusetts, where I am, uh, which is the town next to me where I'm from, that I like to go whenever I go home for a visit. Long story short, in my cupboard, I have a cranberry habanero jelly. So I'm gonna use that. And so I'm gonna use that as my like syrup base since essentially, I think when it says syrup, it, it's like, it wants you to have like a simple syrup. If you don't have anything like that, what I recommend for people to do is go to like a Ross or a, not a Ross, but a, well, I mean, maybe a Ross, but like a Home Goods or Marshalls, they usually have syrups in the home section um, for pretty inexpensive. They're usually anywhere from like $3.99 to like, I don't know, maybe like $8. Or you can go on Amazon or to, uh, if you have a local shop, even better. Um, but uh, e even at Target, you'll get some simple syrups in like the coffee aisle and things like that. It's fun to have those. Um, because they're like, you know, you can experiment with them in any type of a drink. You just find an alcohol that sounds like it fits in that flavor if you want. Or, I mean, you can just add them to like your coffee if you drink coffee. I do not, but like a milkshake or something like that. Um, or, you know, cooking with them or anything. So there's a fun, there's a lot of uses for them, which is great. I would just say if you could find um, a lime syrup, which oftentimes you can find it specifically in this brand which is the master of mixes which like at a total wine or abc liquors they usually have one because like a lot of times they'll have a line simple syrup that i think is designed for like margaritas or like a gin and tonic or something i don't i don't know who's putting sugar in a gin and tonic but um but you know whatever check those are these are available in like your grocery store i'm gonna do that jelly and instead of red salt i was thinking tahini um, which is a like a lime kind of chili seasoning. I love to add it onto like shishito peppers or um, honestly a little food hack is if you put it on Dole Whip in the park, like just throw it, I'm serious, just bring it, put it in the bag. They do it I think at Disneyland, but not as, not as common here, but put it in your backpack. It's like this big, take it with you to the park, sprinkle it on your Dole Whip and it's just like gives you this like tangy, like oh, so good, so good. Um, but so I'm, I'm thinking tahini on the rim, and instead of pomegranate juice, I'm gonna use cranberry pomegranate juice. I got this at Target and I thought that it would be, I thought it would complement the jelly. Yeah, and then the lemonade, I have crystal light packets at my house that I'm gonna use to make lemonade. So this is gonna be a real on the fly cheap thing. And the fun part about this video is I haven't made this drink yet. It could be awful. Tahini could be not the right choice. I don't know. We're going to learn this together. So I hope that, uh, you know, you, I haven't lost you yet. Let's get into the kitchen and make this drink. Just a note, I have a really tiny kitchen. So this video might seem a little awkward for this like next part. Sorry. So here's an important thing to do. Double check your ingredients before you go to the store because I thought I had crystal light lemonade and it turns out I had lemon iced tea, but I got lucky because in my cabinet, I still had one of these uh, Dell's Lemonade mixes, which is supposed to be like a frozen blended drink, but I made it and you know what? It tastes like lemonade. So I've got something that resembles lemonade for this drink, but uh, Dell's Lemonade, if you're in Rhode Island, give it a try, it's delicious. I love it. I've got a, a shaker with ice in it and um, you know, so we're just gonna get started. Again, let's read the directions that said lime. Um, so I've got, this is the tahini right here. And then here is that, um, the Plymouth Bay Winery Cryberry. It's Cranberry Bay Habanero. We're going to be using that today. So again, please don't judge me. There's stuff on my counter. I know I, it's my breads. I don't have a bread box. The kitchen is the smallest kitchen and known to man. But so we have our lime, our red salt. That's what I'm calling this. And then we have our, I got the ocean spray. Like I said, 100% juice. Don't go with the cocktail. The cocktail has so much sugar in it. I, I mean, I know this isn't much better, but this is no sugar added cranberry pomegranate. So we're doing cranberry pomegranate juice in place of pomegranate juice. And then our habanero lime syrup is the jelly and the lemonade we have here. I'm gonna make this drink virgin first and then I'm gonna add liquor into it. So we're just gonna get started here. We're gonna make it like martini style. Like you can get the kids a fun little glass if they wanna drink out of it or whatever. So it says two ounces of pomegranate juice. That's where we're starting. I have this shaker um, that's made by Elevated Craft that's like insulated so your hands don't get cold, but it's got, um, uh, it's got, 
uh, like the measurements on the inside and it's like a braided thing on the other side. So it strains, it does everything. It, it chops, it makes julienne fries. It doesn't do that, I'm just quoting Aladdin. Two ounces of your pomegranate juice, four ounces of our lemonade. Now it says a half ounce of the habanero lime syrup. So the cranberry habanero, I'm gonna do like a, like kind of a heaping spoonful. Now the thing to remember about the jelly is because we're using jelly, we have to like extra shake this drink. A little Darth Vader spoon, it feels like it's appropriate. So just gonna do like a pretty heaping in there. Ooh, it smells so good. Oh my God, this jelly's delicious. It smells delicious. So the lime is just for garnish because it, it called for a lime as well. But uh, I'm gonna add just a little bit of uh, lime in here to give it a little citric acid to hopefully break down this jelly. Just a little bit there, just a little, little teaspoon, bar spoon of that, if you will. Uh, we're gonna put our lid on and we're gonna shake the force out of this drink. God, you know, you know how you can feel yourself so out of shape when you shake a drink and like everything on the body is heaving. We've vigorously shaked our drink. Now we're gonna take our glass and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a little slice of our lime out here. I'm just gonna cut it in half. Here's my knife. So we wanna cut a little, little wheel off, the wheel. Uh, that's gonna hug our glass. So you can have two plates and sque squeeze some of the lime out on, the lime juice out onto one plate, or you can just take your little wedge and just rub the, uh, the rim of the glass that you're gonna be using. I went with a uh, martini, kind of this crazy martini glass that I have here. I'm just gonna dump some of this out on the plate in a circle. So we take our glass, we've rubbed the, the rim of it here. I'm gonna just do, do, do. So we've got kind of the rim on the glass here. We'll give our drink one more shake. And then we're gonna pour this out here. And we're gonna take our lime. Fancy pants. Let's give it a try. Oh my gosh, this is, woo. Okay, there's no alcohol in this. This is very refreshing, like. Mm. It's, I mean, cranberry lemonade is this like something you can't really go wrong with. That pomegranate gives it a little extra, woo, like a surprise in there. Um, but like pairing it with the tahine and the lime is just like, I feel so fancy, but the tahine does this like kind of soury thing to your tongue where it's just like, it's like how if you've ever had a fuzzy tauntaun and it has that numbing effect, I think the tahine is like a fun little like, oh, didn't expect my tongue to kind of have this little dance with the, the food here, uh, the food, the drink. Now we're gonna make an alcoholic one. So the alcohol that I've picked is gin. And specifically, I've got Bog Monster from the Dirty Water Distillery in Plymouth, Massachusetts. I bought this while I was home. Um, this is a, it's distilled gin with cranberry and other botanicals added to it. I thought this would be really good in this because, uh, you know, cranberry, again. But any, any gin will really work for you, anything that you have that would complement some cranberry. So I am gonna add two ounces of gin. So the same exact measurements for everything else, which I'll read to you one more time, we're doing two ounces of our cranberry pomegranate juice, a heaping spoonful of the habanero cranberry jelly, or your syrup. If you're doing syrup, it's a half ounce of the syrup, okay? So remember, if you're doing syrup, half ounce syrup. If you're using a jam or a jelly that you found, that is gonna be a heaping tablespoon of that. Um, and then four ounces of your lemonade, and then two ounces of your liquor of choosing. But like I said, I'm, I'm doing gin. I feel like the gin actually brings the sweetness of the drink down just a little bit. Like I was a little worried. I was like, maybe gin wasn't the way to go, but this gin with like the botanicals and and then the, the sweetness of the tahini. Oh my gosh. Mm, I found a new drink. Oh my God, this is delicious. You have to try this. I was legit worried this was gonna be a dumpster fire. I mean, the filming of the video basically was, but this drink is duh. Delicious, a hundred percent, oh my God. So there you have it, that is the Blurg Fire. I was gonna call it the Blurg and Flurg and Flyer, like it was a Rosen Island from space. Uh, rest in peace, Betty White. But that is from the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, the official Black Spire Outpost cookbook, written by Chelsea Munro Cassell and Mark Summerack. And uh, here's the thing, don't be, don't be intimidated by these recipes. You gotta try and modify things. Uh, what was great, I, I actually, after I stopped recording in the kitchen, is that this actually, 
you do from the jelly get just like the hint, a little like after spice. Like it's just on the tip of your tongue after you take a sip. So the best part about Plymouth Bay Winery is I do believe that they ship. So I, they don't know me. They wouldn't know who I am even if you said my name or anything like that. I just go all the time and when I go, they're like, oh yeah, it's you. And they don't, so um, I get nothing out of it. But if you want to give it a try, I'll put the link in there because I feel like it's uh, they have some unique things. There's a there's actually a um, like a cranberry chocolate one in my uh, in my pantry over there. And I'm like, ooh, what drinks can I use this in for now? But oh my gosh, this is good. Don't don't be afraid to get crazy and experiment. But um, I highly recommend either version of these. What's great is I think they're both delicious. So make one for the kids. Make one for anybody who's not drinking. You don't have to be a kid and not drink. Maybe you just want a delicious uh, cocktail for the warmer weather. Or, you're thinking about warmer weather. I think this is a good warm weather one, but I don't know about you, but I am very excited to see what cocktails await on the uh, people on the Halcyon. Uh, and I, I'm hoping they're fun and exciting because sometimes I feel like, I don't like when there's like a ton of ingredients, but I like when there's like something with a unique twist. And so this, this was really good. I, I'd be curious to see how this is with maybe like bourbon in it. Uh, or honestly, I bet like vodka would probably be pretty good too, but um, give it a try. You'll have to let me know what you think. Um, if you like the video, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I don't know how many more of these I'll do, if ever another one. Um, I live in such an awkward tight space that it probably didn't look great visually or anything like that, but I do appreciate you all bearing with me. And I know everybody out there is just trying to get by, so Hopefully this, this just brought a little bit of fun and joy into your life. And uh, hopefully, if you made the alcoholic one, I'm sure you feel better after after drinking it better than you did after watching the video. But uh, yeah, thank you everybody for for, uh, for dealing with me. If you have any questions or comments or um, honestly any suggestions, if anybody's made a Star Wars inspired drink, I'd love to hear it out there. Um, so thank you everybody again for your time and uh, cheers.